Uh, I've been doing multicultural work for a long time, and I'm learning. Uh, one of my teachers is uh, Judge Maddox here. The other is Kevin Keene. These are men in my group of fraternity that is called the Mankind Project. And Sherry Steinwinder is one of our uh, instructors also. She comes and she facilitates workshops there. So we're learning. But what I've learned this weekend is uh, additional information that I can really use to help people understand the importance of diversity. And that's because of our, our guest. Moon Wah Lee is a, uh, a great honor for me to be here as a board member to present this to you. Your sensitivity, your knowledge, your reading people's faces and body uh, movements and the way they feel at ease or not at ease is an amazing talent. And uh, I've learned a lot from you this weekend, and I hope to continue doing the kind of work that you've taught me. My granddaughter is Mia, Mia Hoffman. She lives a few blocks from you open. And she's nine years old, and I'm hoping that she'll get to one of your adolescent groups. And if that can happen, I think she'll say the same thing to me that she said to me to tell Sherry Steinwinder when she read Sherry's book. Sherry's book I brought to Mia last month. She said, tell Sherry, good work. <laughs> and I think if she meets you, she's going to say also the same thing, good work. So with that, I'd like to bring you up to the podium and give you the award with words. This is a book that's fantastic, and everybody here should take one home if we have enough here. If you don't, we can get you one, but I've given these to several schools in Houston, and uh, they really appreciate it, and I think they're going to have Cherry come and do the bread basket demonstration there, too. So, with that, I want to honor you today by giving you a... to heal the hurts of racism, sexism, and heterosexism through your internationally acclaimed films and workshops. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting because I was texting or emailing folks in the morning and last night that um, so much of my life has been around uh, helping others speak. And so I was realizing how embarrassed I was to get this award today. Partly being Asian, but also, um, as I was listening to the song, how many have come before us? And so it reminded me of those people, but also more importantly, I think, uh, that I wouldn't be here today speaking in Texas about what it's like to be a person of color and to talk about the issues of racism. And so it's to them that I give a great deal of appreciation and for all of us here, too, for what they did. I was thinking that I remember my very first client was Gab. Levi, these bull, those gene people. And it was in San Francisco, and I was with this one gentleman. He, he was African American, and he looks like a gentleman right out of Gentleman Quarterly. I mean, he looked beautiful, what he wore and everything, three piece suits. And I generally wear my Asian clothing and my kimono and my Tibetan shirts. And what he said to me was, you know, we're going to Gap. They're a corporation. And you need not to make sure that your clothes don't get in the way of your message. How many of you heard about that one? <laughs> and what he said was, 
So I want you to wear a suit. I want you to look professional. And what I didn't realize on that day, when he said that to me, some part of myself just shivered because I kept thinking, what was wrong with the way I looked? But I kept thinking that he must really know because he had worked with corporate America. And so I had to borrow suit jackets and tie and even shoes. And I remember coming down the staircase and, and my wife, my ex-wife now, but my ex, my wife said to me, you look incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, so I said, you know, I absolutely feel that way. And so I walked into the, to the Gap corporate offices, and there was my friend, uh, Michael, and he looked at me because I had changed back into my kimono and my Tibetan shirt. And he looked at me and said, I knew I should have just gone to your house, I should have dressed you. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm gonna do all the talking, you introduce your film for two minutes, because they'd never seen The Color of Fear, and then you just sit down, I'll take care of everything. And I remember thinking, Okay, you know, he must know what he's doing. And then he got on up there and, and you know, it was, it was so beautiful the way he talked. And then he got up and did all these PowerPoints, which I had never seen a PowerPoint before. <laughs> and it was really impressive, except I kept, he didn't look at the audience, but they were absolutely bored. But he was impressed with his voice and his <laughs> whole message and everything. And so, when I got up, he said, well, Wen Ma is now going to introduce his film, his new film, The Color of Fear. And, um, and so then he introduced me, and then I got up. What I said to folks was, and then I stopped. And what I said was, you know, I was going to introduce the film. But what I realized today is that what I want to tell you about the journey to get to this room. And I said for the very first time what I is that I wanted to wear what I'm wearing today. And Michael had suggested that I wear a suit. But I want to tell you that the realization I came to was that all of my life I had been letting go of who I am. I have let go that I have a Chinese accent. I spoke per perfect Cantonese up to the age of five until I went to school and the children were laughing at me and mimicking me. And so I lost all of my Cantonese accent. I went to school with a beautiful box filled with my Chinese food, with my bok on with the steamed rice, my lap chow with my steamed sausage and my siu gai which was soy sauce chicken, and my beautiful wooden chopsticks that my mother had given me. And I remember on the first day of school bringing that there, and the students started laughing at me and kept saying, hmm, what's that horrible smell? And I remember taking my box of food and slowly hiding it underneath my desk. And when lunchtime came, I remember throwing my entire lunch into the garbage can. But what I didn't realize then, and as I'm even telling you now, is that I threw far more than my lunch away that day. I think I threw away the very best parts of me. The parts of my people. The part of myself that was afraid to grow my gi back in the way of my people. The part of myself that wore my clothing of my people, not my costume, but the clothing of my people. The part of myself that my father took two and a half months to find Lake Wenhuang. And my day I was born, my father put Gary on my birth certificate with hopes that I would not go through what he had to go through. And at the age of 34, I took my name back. And so I said to the folks at Gap, I stand before you today to reclaim all that was taken from me, all that I was told was inappropriate for this country. 
And I say to you today that my Cantonese language is as much a part of the American language, that my name, Le Nguyen Hoa, is as much American as is Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Bill Clinton. I stand before you today to tell you that how I look is not just beautiful on Asian Heritage Month, but is beautiful every single day, and not just at the United Nations. And that my name is Lei Mun Hoa. My name is Lei Mun Hoa. And I got a standing ovation. And I never looked back. But what I want to tell you today is I received this reward and award is that I hope that someday you take back our beautiful parts of who we are. That we wear the clothing that our people wore, that we were proud of in our colors. I hope that you will grow your hair out, as I said to Oprah Winfrey when I was on her program, when she wanted to straighten her hair. I said, Oprah, you look beautiful the way you are. Because when I think of Michael Jackson, <coughs> or even that in Japan, 30, 40% of Japanese take surgery so that they widen their eyes to look like whites. What I want to say is we are beautiful just the way we are. That multiculturalism is about valuing, embracing, not just celebrating, all of who we are. And I will spend every breath of my life so that my son will know one day, as a Guatemalan child, growing up to be a young man, that he has added to this country. He has added his beauty to this country. And I encourage each and every one of you who are sitting at your tables, when you learn the languages of the world, you will learn the languages of